song we just sang, I thoroughly enjoy hearing it song. It's one of my favorites. It's such a pretty song. And it actually sums up very well, I would say, what we're going to be talking about in the next few moments. Again, no coordination there, but it did work out. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, we see in the first four verses that the Apostle Paul is, is charging Timothy. He's, if you would, on his deathbed. Obviously, he's not at this particular moment, but we would consider it something like that. His charge to the young preacher regarding certain things he's going to be dealing with as or in his journey as a preacher, as well as as a Christian. Because these are things that we all must individually deal with, especially those who would be preaching the, the Word of God. comes in the form of a warning. These are some things that you should be doing. Be ready for it. And then he gets to verse 5. It says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of, a, of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What a marvelous thing it would be if each and every one of this, of us rather, could have these verses inscribed on our tombstones. There will be a day that we will die. We will give up our physical bodies and our spirits will depart. Paul knew this was going to happen with him. He was no doubt mentally preparing for his trip to Rome. But ultimately we all must be preparing in like manner. But he, as we said, we char he's, he charged Timothy to make full proof of his ministry, and then he pointed out, I am ready to be offered. I am ready to die. Because he knew it was coming. It was at hand. It's close. Things are closer for me because I have longer arms. But... Paul knew it was coming. It was at hand. He says that I, he had fought a good fight. He had finished his course. He speaks other, in other areas of Scripture that the Christian walk, the Christian life, should be more like a race. We, we run to obtain first prize. Uh, during the Olympic Games, they would get sometimes these uh, olive brow crowns. And that was their... Their trophy, if you will. They didn't have a participation trophy. If you showed up, you won. No, you actually had to participate and do well in any of these functions. Paul knew he did well. He finished his course. He had kept the faith. So this speaks that the individual Christian can know whether or not they're saved. Likewise, those who are of the world can know that they're not saved. And ideally, they do know that, they realize that, and they take the steps necessary to correct their life of error. But then we get again to verse 8. He's no doubt reminding Timothy of what is in store for him and all who are faithful. A crown of righteousness. This is the crown that we as Christians should be striving for with every fiber of our being. And Jesus, the righteous judge, is going to be the one that passes those out to those who are faithful. If you want to look at it like that. But the last phrase, but unto all them also that love his appearing. The word there, love, is agapeo, which is the verb form of agape. So it's an action. It's a continuous 
process that Christians must have. It's a, a welcoming sense. You welcome Christ's appearing. Well, this is no doubt a reference to His second coming. Those who are still alive when the Lord does return, can it be said that you're welcoming our Lord's return? You think about this time of year <clears throat> where all the little kids are excited about what presents they might get towards the end of this month, or even with birthdays, oh, I'm going to get whatever toy is out there. And they're looking forward to that. They're welcoming, hey, is tomorrow my birthday? Hey, is tomorrow my birthday? No. <laughs> it's like, we're, are we there yet? Are we there yet? No, not quite. But that same attitude is very similar to what we should have as Christians. We should be, be preparing for that coming, but we should welcome Christ's coming. If we're going to welcome it, though, the burden is on us to be prepared fully for when He does come. Because he will be returning. Are we prepared? And as we stated prior, Paul knew that he had finished the course. He was ready for when Jesus would return. Even though he knew that he would be dying, he was prepared. He was ready. So do you love the Lord's appearing? Do you love his appearing? He's coming back. We must never lose sight of that. How are we using our lives in the flesh? Are we preparing for his coming? Or are we wasting our days doing what everybody chooses to do? Again, again that is an active uh, thing that continues on. We can practice it. We can grow in it. But it must be an action. So this afternoon, we always typically offer the invitation for those who might want to render obedience to the gospel or those who would wish to uh, exhibit their repentance and confession of fault. The next few moments is dedicated to that time, that opportunity. If you love our Savior's appearing and you're faultless at this time, great, keep on. But if you do have error in any way, whether you wish to become a Christian or you wish to, as a child of God, put away that error, why not take the few moments we have and make sure that you are indeed ready to be offered or be ready for the Lord's coming because we don't know when he will come back. But he will be here. He will come. So whatever the need, those make it known as together we stand and sing.